Sweet. Sour. Savory. Strong. Some of the oldest ferments are made with vegetables. Discover a vegetable made to last through the New Zealand winter. A crop that flourishes in the mountains of Indonesia. And how the Japanese keep a healthy diet with this produce. These are age-old recipes being revived by artisans in their quest for new flavors. The vast flatlands of Chikusei produce some of Japan's best quality rice. Plump, shiny, and emitting a rich aroma is the local cultivar, Milky Queen. Rain or shine, once a week, one man shows up on the doorsteps of Oshima Farm. The farm grows organic Milky Queen rice, but it's the byproduct of rice polishing that Endo san is after. This freshly milled rice bran is his secret for turning fresh vegetables into delicious tsukemono. Tsukemono, or pickles, have been around since the 8th century. Their sheer variety reflects the plethora of seasonal vegetables on the archipelago. Nakaya has been making pickles by hand and additive-free for 25 years. One of their signature products is rice bran pickles, known as nakazuke. Endo-san wastes no time getting the brand back to the workshop. Their lipids oxidize and develop an odor over time. So freshness is paramount. The rice bran is at the core of the entire ferment. Milky Queen rice bran, which emits an aroma akin to roasted soybean flour, was a precious find. この米ぬかがあの一食口食べてみたんですけど、非常に甘くて今まで使っていた米ぬかとは全く別物でした。この出会いがあのぬか漬けがこれをぬかに入れたらきっといや絶対美味しくなると思って。Rice bran is the perfect medium for growing lactic acid bacteria. Those bacteria are naturally present in vegetables. Vegetable scraps are prepped for this. Next, the bran bed. To get it going, some salt, chili peppers, kombu. And finally, water to form a crumble. Hey, the compacted bran bed becomes a low oxygen environment, great for air sensitive lactic acid bacteria. Coat the bacteria packed vegetable scraps with salt and bury them in the bran bed to kick start the process. Covering it loosely allows carbon dioxide to escape. Sure. 
Endosan replaces the vegetable scraps two to three times over a week so that enough bacteria will be cultivated. The bran bed, now home to billions of lactic acid bacteria and other microorganisms, will soon be ready to receive its first batch of fresh vegetables. Sometime in the 1300s, waves of East Polynesians arrived on canoe in what is now modern-day New Zealand. They became the Maori, and the Eastern Bay of Plenty was one of their first settlements. For the families of Whakarai Pa, the land Te Urewera nourishes and sustains them, and there is no shortage of food sources like wild pork and deer, native plants and fish. An important crop for the community is corn. They call it kanga. It was introduced to New Zealand as early as 1772. Corn grows easily, but is available only in the summer. In the past, Māori have made this nutritious vegetable last through the cold, leaner months of the year using traditional methods. Fermenting kanga is a relatively straightforward process. Throw whole cobs into woven flax bags and immerse them entirely in a stream for two to three months. The corn undergoes a spontaneous acid fermentation as microbes in the water break down its carbohydrates. The acid produced prevents bacteria from reproducing, thus preserving the corn. Right, we're coming to our vat, where the corn's been fermenting for the past couple of months. Look at that, it's all falling off already. When we try it, we want to keep all of that. The result is an earthy product, kanga pirao, which literally means rotten or stinking corn. Sugar. Six Chef Joe has been making kanga pirao since he was young and is now passing on the time-worn culinary knowledge to the next generation of young Maori. Kanga pirao can be dried and used as flour in baking, or it can be consumed as what is colloquially known as a Maori porridge. the kernels fall off the cob easily. Washed and minced into a paste, it thins out as it's cooked over a flame, giving off distant notes of blue cheese. I'm gonna put a little bit of sugar over the top. Because this is already cooked, we can put some cold one in there just to thicken it just a little bit. Despite nearly 17% of New Zealand's population identifying as Māori, this delicacy isn't widely available anymore. Mm, 
Eat it all day. Oh, yeah. A simple recipe from ancestors can spark new interest in old ways. In Chikusei, carrot, turnip, and daikon are going to be turned into nakazuke. The pickle master Endo-san lovingly prepares each piece of vegetable for fermentation. A salt rub draws out moisture from the vegetables to allow the rice bran's flavor to penetrate more easily. The fermented rice bran bed is ready to be used for nukazuke. Compacting the rice bran pushes out air pockets within. the vegetables disappear into the bran. Snugly in bed, a second round of fermentation begins. Lactic acid bacteria devours the carbohydrates in rice bran and produces lactic acid. Butyric acid bacteria feeds off this acid to give us butyric acid, another probiotic. The yeasts make alcohol, bringing out sweetness and aroma. Two days is the sweet spot for rice bran pickles to develop a strong taste while retaining their natural hues and flavors. Oh, it's nice. It's nice. Moist, tender, a hint of saltiness. Endo san's nukazuke honors the spirit of homemade pickles in his mother's kitchen. The same method can be replicated on fruits and eggs, resulting in unexpectedly delectable pickles. A traditional Japanese diet is heavily influenced by principles of balance. Pungent and tart nakazuke helps to create this harmony, countering the heaviness of umami-rich foods. In Jogjakarta, traditions are kept alive through art, education, and its fragrant, sweet, and pleasing cuisine. Two thirds of the island of Java is cultivated land. April spells the end of the rainy season. The cassava harvested during this time is thought to be the best because of its low water content. The choice ingredient for making tape singkong. Before daybreak, the Dewi household begins work on a freshly harvested batch of cassava. Having made tape singkong for two decades, this family knows everything there is to know about cassava. Cuman ada faktor cuaca, tapi kalau 
kadang panas banget terus hujan nah itu panas hujan panas hujan itu biasanya cuacanya kurang mendukung untuk tape The tough skin of the tuba comes off, and then its flesh is chopped down into smaller pieces. Only eight to ten month old cassava is used. Any more, and the plant will be too old. Indonesia is the world's fourth biggest producer of this high-carb, drought-tolerant crop. In some areas of the country, it's even a staple that substitutes for rice. Soaking the cassava overnight helps to remove the gum around it, so that yeast can seep into the white flesh. Heat causes the tissues to soften, further facilitating microbial penetration. Four hours later, the piping hot cassava emerges from the pot and cools off on bamboo trays. The starter culture that kicks off fermentation is known as ragi, a rice-based yeast, along with a consortium of mold and bacteria. It's sprinkled and coated evenly onto every exposed surface of cassava. And then the whole thing is wrapped tightly in banana leaves that speed up the microbes' work. The microbes perform their magic best between 24 to 36 degrees Celsius. Comfortably warm and not too hot as to kill them. In these conditions, mold and bacteria break down starch into simple sugars and the yeast converts these sugars into alcohols. The result? A sweet and sour taste and the mild, alcoholic smell of tape singkong. In Jogja, a batch of cassava has turned soft, moist and sweet after four days of fermentation. Jadi tape yang ciri-cirinya bagus itu E, teksturnya ini agak keset, nggak lengket, nah, terus apa ya airnya itu tidak keruh, mm -mm, itu bagus. Tape singkong is a popular snack that's eaten on its own but it can also be used as an ingredient in cakes and desserts. Mrs. Dewi delivers hers across town to singer and baker extraordinaire, Mas Hudson. One of his shop's best-selling products is tape cake. Hey, 
jadi kek tape ini sebenarnya uh, dulu uh, almarhum mama saya mereka, uh, beliau membuat kek tape ini cuman mungkin uh, sudah tidak relevan lagi dengan zaman sekarang karena dulu uh, keknya rasanya uh, terlalu jadul supaya anak-anak zaman dulu yang katanya uh, bahan tape ini jadul mereka bisa kembali mencintai uh, makanan dari tape ini cleaned of its fiber and core the cassava is soft enough to be smashed into a smooth paste Kenapa kita rasanya beda? Karena kandungan tapenya sendiri, dari tapenya sendiri itu rasanya sudah uh, otentik. Add the usual cake ingredients and send it into the oven. Nah, terus aku coba uh, apa? Me, aku perbaiki resipinya sehingga cake-nya sudah mulai bisa diterima masyarakat dan lebih lembut tentunya dengan berbagai macam topping dan varian rasa. Traditional tape cake is an irresistible buttery treat with the unique tangy flavor of fermented cassava. A humble ingredient that shines in the hands of the Indonesian people. <laughs>